I'm calling this season Ryan's journey to being a dom top. Oh my! Well, at least emotionally. I know, yeah, emotionally. For, oh yeah. No, actually, you're right. He does top. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, well, how could you have forgotten that? Yeah, the the metaphor the metaphor is very uh, thinly veiled. I would say very right. thinly veiled. How are you doing, Ryan? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. It's Friday, so uh, and I'm vaccinated, so that's all good. Gorgeous. I love that. Um, I'm vaccinated as well. How? When did you get fully vaxxed? Uh, officially uh, last Friday. So um, what is it like? I don't know. Seven more days and then I can have sex again. I don't know. Oh, like... I love that. Yeah. <laughs> just, just like, yeah. Do you have your suitor? Yeah, I think so. Like I have like a list, like a mental list. Yeah. Um, right. That's great. You should you should make sure you have backups and stuff in case one's busy. God, you've th- you've really thought this through. I mean, well, it sounds like you've thought this through, Mister Making a List and Checking It Twice. <laughs> yeah, ho 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 ho. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Anyways, anyways, but we will get to we'll, we will talk about sex because special. Um, you know, there is a lot of sex, uh, and we will we will get to that. But um, I have to say first and for- foremost that I'm gonna miss TV Ryan. Um, and I'm really going to miss TV Ryan. And as somewhat of a mama's boy myself, I'm going to miss his mom. Uh, how? I know. I know. It's a bummer. But, uh, you know, at least you get more time with them for season two, right? I know, right? That is a plus side. How are you feeling now that the show is coming to an end? I feel, honestly, it sounds weird to say, but I feel pretty good about it. I mean, obviously, the decision to end the show was not mine. But I think the more time I got to spend, here's the deal. I'm going to give you like a little blurry timeline of the show. We pitched it in 2015. It took four years to get made. Okay. Then it came out April, 2019. And then we took us five months to get renewed and then COVID shut us down. So it's now going to take us two years for season two. So like as amazing as the show has been and incredible, it's also been kind of like a bad boyfriend. So it's like, cause it's like, I, this has been a part of my life for six years. You know what I mean? So I, because we knew from the jump that this was, really the, this was going to be the last season, we were able to really craft, I think, a really complete and final season. So from the storytelling perspective, it feels totally right. And also, I'm just excited to do other stuff. I mean, again, special has been really incredible, but it's been a really, really difficult show to make. And it feels like it's always hanging on by a thread. And um, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm ready for a new anxiety moment. <laughs> I love an anxiety moment. Difficult in the sense of, um, you being so involved in every aspect of the show or? Well, no, I mean, that I love cause I'm a type A Virgo from hell. So like, that's where I thrive. But, um, no, I mean, just like, again, the, the four years it took to make, and then, you know, we came out, but it took a while to get a renewal because, I refused to do 15 minutes again. So we had to do a whole new deal, blah, 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 blah. And then the COVID shut us down. So again, everything was really protracted. And it's just, again, it's just, you know, it's just, it's been a journey with the show, man. She has not been easy. She's like, <laughs> well, listen, boyfriends are work too, so. <laughs> they do, and they give you amazing orgasms sometimes, and that's really all you have to think about. So what you're saying is the payoff was worth it in the end. Oh my God, the payoff was totally worth it. Yeah, absolutely. I just feel like the season, have you seen the full season of season two? Last night, yeah, it's great. Oh my god, do you like it? I love it. I love it so much. I love where we, oh. en- I love where we end with the characters. Um, it, there's so much to, to me embedded in in this show about um being okay with being on your own. Mm-hmm. Ever since the first season, yeah. yeah, that really resonates with me. Oh, good. I'm so glad. You know, not many people have seen it. I've just started to do press for it. So whenever I see someone that's seen the whole season, it's like medium rare, and I'm so excited because. You know, we've been living with this show for two years. And I mean, I think it's good. I'm really proud of it. We worked really, really hard on it, but I just haven't gotten any responses yet. So it's really nice to hear that people are enjoying it. Yeah, it must be so hard when you're just so in it. You're so involved, right? Yeah, absolutely. But I I like really, I mean, I think it's definitely a a real great step forward from season one. And um, again, like we really, really worked our asses off on it. So I hope people really like it. You never know. You never know. 
Um, uh, because this show, the first season and the second season, is somewhat autobiographical, with season two, where do you end and where does the other Ryan begin? I would say as the show's gone on, the character of Ryan has become less and less like me, especially in season two. You know, season one honestly wasn't really like me either. I think like, I mean, I was never like this character. I mean, I was never or this Arrested Development. I moved out of my parents' house, 18, right on schedule. Um, lost my virginity, 17, right on schedule. So I, I, I don't, what I do relate to with this character of Ryan in seasons one and two is like the emotional themes, like like what he's struggling with, this feeling of, um, is he enough? This struggle with self-worth and independence, like that really resonates to, with me deeply. But in terms of the situations this little goof troop finds himself in, I, I don't relate to that. Like I would never date someone in an open relation who has like all these convoluted rules and be like, sure, I can see you Tuesday evening and I'm totally okay with that. Like, I don't think, I mean, maybe I, maybe I would have, honestly, I would have done that in my early 20s, but the, the situation never presented itself to me. But, um, but yeah, so, but emotionally, I think I do, I, I, I get it. I've been through what he's been through. But yeah. I'm calling this season Ryan's journey to being a dom top. Oh my, well, at least emotionally. I, yeah, emotionally. For, oh yeah, no, actually you're right. He does top. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> uh, like, well, how could you have forgotten that? Yeah, the, the metaphor, the metaphor is very uh, thinly veiled, I would say. Very I, thinly veiled. I love it as a metaphor. I'm just obviously being as literal as possible, but you're being metaphorical. Yeah. I love that. Well, I think it works both ways, baby. I think he, uh, I think Ryan has been emotionally and physically bottoming for a lot of people. And I think this season is all about him coming into his own and kind of asserting what he wants and not apologizing for it. He's not apologizing for taking up space. That's something I really, really relate to. I think like a couple of years ago, I really experienced a shift in terms of like realizing how much I was contorting myself to like make everyone else around me comfortable while never asking like am I comfortable like do I want to do this like I and then I would see like straight white males like waltz around the world with like such confidence like you know engaging their female baristas in non-consensual conversations about their band and I would like my blood would boil because I'd just be like I can't imagine going into an interaction not fully wondering what the other person is feeling and taking their feelings into account like I felt you know what I mean I feel like I'm so hyper aware of how I'm being perceived and like, and making sure that everyone else around me is okay with who I am. But I really have learned to like, let go of that completely. And I just try to walk around with the confidence of a mediocre straight white male. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like that is a journey that a lot of us as gay people have to go on because we are so in touch with who we are and our surroundings. Um, and uh, yeah, it must be nice to be a straight white man. I know. And I cosplay as one every day. Uh, yeah, I know. Not, not, at, not at the coffee shop, though. I leave those baristas alone. <laughs> they don't need any of this. They don't. <laughs> they're, getting an, they're getting enough on their own, right? They're With everyone else. Wait, they don't need to hear about my day. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> um, it sounds like you had a past as a barista and you like you might know no. the like, as, if, as if I could carry anything are you kidding me a barista is a guy with cerebral palsy's worst nightmare it's like all the things he can't do hand-eye coordination like yeah. balancing oh my god I would be fired immediately <laughs> with hot beverages right yeah it would be a lawsuit waiting to happen um, so I promised that we would get back to the sex and here's Here's, here's that time. But like with the first season, you really went there with the second season as well. This is not the kind of gay content that's that's watered the fuck down to make straight people more comfortable, which is why I love it so much. Yes, it's definitely, you can tell it's, it's written and performed by a gay person. And also like that's partially, I've been very vocal about how I only hire gay actors to play gay roles. And it's not because I don't, people are like, um, it's called acting, ever heard of it? That's their literal job. And I'm like, honey, sweetie, darling baby, that's not what this is about. I understand, I'm very aware of what acting means, but we don't live in a world where there's an equal playing field. And 
that's why I want to give people opportunities to get parts because not a lot of people are giving them those opportunities. And also from a selfish point of view, it's much easier to shoot a gay sex scene with a gay actor than it is a straight actor. I don't want to like fucking explain the mechanics of gay sex to a straight actor. Life is too short, honey. Life is too short. (laughs) Somebody had to say it. (laughs) Yeah, it's just like, I don't know, but yeah, the, we definitely push the envelope and then we come all over it for season two um, <laughs> in terms of sex, but um, sex is my muse for better or for worse. And they think that there's just sort of like, I just don't understand why the, the representation of gay sex has been so um, dire. Lame, lame. It's been lame. It's lame. I mean, there's but like, it's either, again, it's either like hypersexualized and like very porny and erotic, or it's like, you know done in a tent and it's like off camera and you just hear lots of grunting and moaning um so it was really nice to not do any of that and also not have sex that's like cloaked in like shame or secrecy i'm not saying that there's not value to those stories because it is a part of our existence but i think we've reached a point where i'm like okay i'm ready for for us to level up as like for, for gay storytelling I'm, I'm interested now in stories that don't revolve around our trauma and our pain or that include our trauma and pain, but also include like, you know, anal sex jokes, like we contain multitudes. Sure. Yeah. And like the pleasures of being gay. Which there are so many. I mean, you couldn't pay me to be straight. It's horrifying. Um, so <laughs> it's like, yeah, so I just think it's really, really important that we tell a different kind of story because I think we've earned it and I think we're ready. Yeah, these uh, this season, from what I know, was shot entirely during the pandemic, which means the sex scenes were also shot during the pandemic. Is that right? Uh, 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 the first four episodes were shot pre-COVID. Okay. So what I'm saying is they were real. <laughs> 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 and then COVID came along and we're like, oh, no, I guess we have to fake it. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, um, season the first four episodes were done pre-COVID. It's so funny watching the first four episodes because I feel like I have a literal record of the last month of the world before it changed irrevocably forever. It's like so eerie. Um, and uh, so yeah, the first, the, first, the first few sex scenes were done like without you know, COVID in mind. And then the one sex scene that we had was the topping scene. But again, like with me and Max Jenkins, Max is a friend of mine and I've known him for a long time. And there's just such a level of comfort between the two of us that um again another benefit of just shooting with gay friends it's like it's just there's this this ease that i feel like it wouldn't have with some like rando straight stranger so um i don't feel like the pandemic actually made the sex scenes suffer and i know that like some people were like cutting sex scenes through the pandemic and i was like this is like the dna of the show like, I can't, this is like, no, I was like, I will die on this literal sex hill. You know what I mean? Truly, like literally die. Yeah, like give me COVID, I will die just so that I can have gay sex representation in my show. That's not watered yeah. down. Yeah, yeah when, we, when we talk about, you know, dying for your art, I didn't realize I was going to be really um, in metabolizing that in a literal sense for block two of shooting. But here we were, baby. There we were. Uh, there is something to be said about shooting um, with like another gay person, a sex scene that is, but also like someone that you just happen to know. I just like realizing that I have seen most of my gay male friends naked at some point or another, or, like not necessarily yeah. in a sexual way, but just like a ha ha ha, here's my penis way. <laughs> right, totally. I mean, I, I don't know if I've done that, but I do, I do, I do know that. Yes, there is a level of ease and brotherhood. And um, I mean, again, it's all different, but, but Max is very comfortable with himself. And uh, that made me feel in turn more comfortable with myself. And uh, yeah, it was, it was very fun. I mean, the, the sex scenes are never fun, totally. Um, they're kind of nightmares, but, um, but it, it could have been a lot worse. Well, it's still choreographed, right? It's still like a dance. Yeah, it is. Again, when you're doing it with another gay guy, it's pretty intuitive and very easy to construct because we've all done it and we've all been there. Um, it's not like building a mystery based on McLaughlin, but, uh, and we had an intimacy coordinator who was amazing. Um, but again, it was not, it was a very, it felt like a very safe space basically, you know? And 
yeah, I don't know. It was it was it was as fun as it could have been. There was a fun ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> um on the on the topic of of sex still um i want to say that i really appreciate the storyline involving anal sex and poop um, oh my god i know why has no one talked about that that's crazy well this is the thing that's this is why we're going to talk about it i want to know everything about that bit in the show and mostly like why you decided to write uh, a storyline involving um the part of butt sex that so few gay men talk about well because um it happened to me exo jane uh, you know, when I was 17, losing my virginity, I, I shit on my boyfriend at the time's dick. And I, again, there was no reference point for anal sex in 2004. Like there just wasn't anything. There was no, there was no Netflix series tackling it <laughs> with care. <laughs> um, so you kind of had to wing it, you know what I mean? And, uh, Anal sex was really intense. I remember the first few times we tried fucking, it hurt too bad. Because I don't think we even like realized like lube was a thing. I mean, it was all very weird. It was a DIY affair. Then finally, when we like, I finally like, you know, you know, did my emotional exercises and was ready to do it. Um, then that's when I had the accident. And I remember thinking, oh my God, is my asshole broken? Is this like a story of a palsy thing? Like what the fuck is going on i mean i remember googling or i don't even know if it was google but whatever it was in 2004 like anal shit sex like whatever like it was just like but then like nothing really came up so i remember feeling a lot of shame about that and being like and not, i didn't know about douching or anything like that so uh i just you know whenever i have to go through something and suffer i'm always like wow this is a nice opportunity for someone who is like a teenager who maybe think about having, you know, anal sex for the first time to know that this does happen. Shit happens literally. And um, you're not freakish. Your asshole is not broken. Um, it is a part, honey, it's a part of the fabric of our gay ass lives. That is right. That is so right. Pun intended. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, you take the shame out of it. Which is great. Yeah, I also just thought it was an interesting kind of turn for, you know, for Tanner to have the sexual misstep, as it were, and have Ryan not respond in a kind of chic, compassionate way, because Tanner's been kind of compassionate with him. And, you know, any time that Ryan kind of acts in an uninvolved way is very interesting to me, because I'm like a big advocate that like, you know, marginalized people exist, but they can also exist as very flawed and like not always do the right thing. Cause I think again, like we're given this tiny space to exist, but we better be virtuous and be like magical and wonderful. And so I thought it was an interesting way to kind of um, make Ryan sort of the asshole as it were in the sexual experience with Tanner and kind of, I don't know. I thought it was just an interesting little wrinkle for their doomed relationship. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I also, you know, and I'm curious where this came from, because um, this is something that I have also never seen uh, on TV. But the the guy um, who you meet who fetishizes disability, mm -hmm. um, yeah. was that based on a situation in your own life? Why was that an important? I've never I've never been fetishized, but I, I've heard about it and I know that it's a thing. Um, I think they're called devotees and um I thought it was an interesting way to explore Ryan grappling with his sex, his self-worth. So it was really important to me that like, it was very clear that this is a consensual experience. Ryan's not being sexually assaulted. Um, you know, the guy says like, you know, is this okay? Or is this fine? And Ryan says, yes, because that's a very real thing that we don't talk about, which is basically sex that you're not comfortable having, but you don't necessarily have the self-esteem to MacGyver yourself out of it. Um, and so I think it was a really interesting way to show Ryan where he's at in the beginning of the season in terms of um, feeling really grateful just to be there, feeling really grateful to be having sex at all, and especially with a hallmark actor who he thinks, who he perceives as out of his league. Um, I thought it was just a really interesting way for, for Ryan to be faced with, you know, advocating for himself and the failure to do so in the moment because I think most people can relate to that of having sex that they don't necessarily like but they don't quite know how to navigate themselves out of yeah yeah I've been there before totally 
Um, I, um, I should say before I get into, before I ask my next question, I should just say congratulations to you for revolutionizing um, TV. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, like rep- representation for um, queer people who happen to be living with disability. Uh, you have really revolutionized that, and that's a big deal. Um, so, yeah, so that will be the legacy of special when it does end, unfortunately. Um, in, in a week. Yeah. <laughs> how, how long? It's uh, ending now. <laughs> it's already ended. <laughs> it's, uh, it's legacy is already cemented because it's done. <laughs> uh, it's done for it's done for you aside from press. But um, how do you hope special has enlightened people within within the LGBTQ plus community uh, and beyond who haven't really considered the experiences of someone who is a queer person with a disability? Well, I just I hate the word normal because what is normal? But I hope it has. I feel like there's there's so so little is discussed in terms of disability. Um, I feel like disabled people often exist on the fringes of our society because they are quite literally shut out based on this world not being accessible on a very basic level. So I think that the dialogue around disability is happening, but I, I still think it's not happening to the level that it should. And I think people feel uncomfortable when talking about disability. Um, I feel like they're worried about saying the wrong thing or whatever. And I think um, with special, you know, comedy is the best superpower that I have that I've used throughout my life um, to get through it. And I think when you give people permission to laugh, it creates this general ease and comfort. So I hope, you know, after watching special, the lives of disabled people don't remain this like you know, strange, overwhelming enigma. And it's not something that they're afraid of anymore. Um, and uh, I really, yeah, so I hope, I hope Special does that for them. And um, I, I really, I think that kind of all gay men can relate to feeling like the underdog or not feeling like enough, not feeling desirable enough. Um, it really, Ryan is disabled, but you don't have to be disabled to be feeling the things that he's feeling. So I think it's really just important to show uh, a gay character who doesn't have, you know, fit the physical ideals, who has a normal body. I, I, you know, I mean, I hope, uh, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I'm like kind of veering off path or whatever, but I just, I I hope that it normalizes disability and I hope that um, it, adds more texture to the queer experience because in a lot of ways tv is gayer than ever i feel like you can't sell a pilot without including like a gay guy in there but i still think gay men are rarely allowed to be like the complicated main course of the show i think they're often relegated to like being the appetizer um so i think it's really important that we show gay men um and their rich interior life not just in the context of them like shopping or being comedic relief do you know what I mean? Totally, which is what you do. You accomplish that in season two with Ryan. You, you know, yeah. he has moments where he's not particularly likable, um, yeah. but that's also very human. Yeah, of course, we're not all likable. It's like, I just feel like TV exists in this really binary way where it's like either someone is really virtuous and amazing or they're like a fucking asshole and they're a gre- Like, I feel like there was also this like the pendulum swung in TV for a while where like, every character was like so aggressively unlikable that didn't feel true either because not, you know, people aren't total assholes and they're not totally amazing. Like they exist in in between. And I think that's always what I try to show with Ryan and other characters is that yes, they can act deeply flawed, but they can also be incredible. It's like, to me, it's like not that complicated. Just borrow from like what you know from your experience with humans in real life and just put it into the show. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Which is what you've done. (laughs) Oh, good, good. Thank you. Um, so, okay, looking ahead, um, you know, after after special, uh, you mentioned wanting to move on and work on other projects. What kind of stories do you want to tell next or be a part of? And in what form? Film or television? Another yeah. book? Um, well, it's interesting you ask. I mean, I, I still am in my gay disabled period. You know, like Picasso had his blue period and I'm still in my gay disabled period. So... Um, I wrote a novel called Just By Looking At Him that uh, is about a gay guy with cerebral palsy who writes for TV. What? She didn't stray too far for this one. <laughs> uh, 
And then that's being adapted into a movie with Greg Berlanti producing. So I'm going to be writing that and starring in it, which will be really great. Um, and then I sold a show to HBO Max called Accessible, which is like a teen disabled comedy, um, which I hope gets picked up to series. Uh, I've got a lot of moving parts. I mean, here's the thing, like, you know, I sometimes I feel like, oh, like, do I, should I really kind of go dive into disability again? Or, you know, I've already done that. But the fact is, is that there's so much that has not been explored. And that's what really gets me excited as a storyteller um, is when something hasn't been talked about. When, when you can say things like, wow, I've never seen that on TV before. Like, it's like crazy that we're still saying that in 2021, there are things, even though there are approximately 40 million shows on the air, there are things that I still have stigma and still have taboo. And like, you can watch things and be like, I've never seen that on a TV show before or a movie or whatever. So I think it's just sort of the nature of what I'm drawn to that I keep going to this well of disability because there's still so much left untouched and unexplored. And that really, really excites me. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna be playing in the world of disability for a little bit longer and um, we'll see what happens. That's awesome. I'm so happy that you have so much lined up. I'm um I can't wait I can't wait to to take it all in. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, and uh yeah, and here's here's to and here's to poopy anal sex. <laughs> let's cel let's celebrate it. Let's just celebrate it. Celebrate it. Lift it up. Poopy anal sex hive rise up. Rise up. We lift you up. We support you. We elevate your voice. Thank you. Thank representation you. matters. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, I'll spread the word on special season two. Um, I'm tell every gay person, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know three. <laughs> I know of a few more than that. Yeah. Those gay guys whose penises you've seen go tell them. Yeah. Okay. So and, and the people on your list, the one that you're, my sex you're list. surveying for your post back sexual experience, go talk to them too. Okay. I'm on it. All right. I'm going to do it right after I, I, good. It's all about outreach and activism. You have to find something to believe in. Th thank you. Yes, exactly. Um, all right. You're delightful. Thanks so much for doing what you yeah. do. And it was really thank nice you, to meet you, you and connect with you. Okay, Ryan? We'll right, talk again at some point. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.